All right, that was the moment that led to what you're seeing on your screen, thousands erupting in celebration outside of the governor's mansion. Puerto Rico's embattled governor, Ricardo Rosselló, will step down next Friday. A corruption scandal and damning leaked communications attacking some of his critics led to that downfall. So joining me now from San Juan is the former speaker of the New York City Council, Melissa Mark Viverito, as she was one of the targets of Rosselló's attacks. Melissa, great to see you this morning. Tell us what happened last yes. night. Tell us about the moment that it became clear, well, that he announced he was going to step down. I mean, look, it was there was a lot of anxiety uh, leading up to it. it there originally had been messages sent out that there was going to be a communication at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, and that got delayed. Did not really understand what was happening. Uh, a lot of uh, visuals of riot police being brought in to La Fortaleza, being brought into the area where all the protesters were. So there was concerns that potentially uh, maybe he wasn't resigning. And uh, there unfortunately has been a history of repressive measures, utilization of tear gas uh, against protesters here every night and to try to disperse the crowds. And so it was getting very tense. Uh, and, and it didn't take, it took almost until midnight uh, for the governor finally to send out that message. Uh, that he had, uh, that he was resigning as of next week. So obviously, uh, jubilation, exhilaration, this is a revolution. Uh, this is people that have been almost two weeks out on the streets in massive numbers, historic by any means, not only in Puerto Rico, but uh, probably uh, in the United States as well. This is really massive. And so this is about the people reclaiming government and turning the page. And this is about people wanting to have a say in their destiny and that over historically over time, uh, the government has not made them a priority, that decisions are being made in a vacuum and behind closed doors. And so mm -hmm. this is very much a warning and a message that's being sent uh, to those in power and those who have been elected to supposedly lead, right? So this mm -hmm. is a really unbelievably important moment in Puerto Rico's history. And because he seemed so dug in for those two weeks of those massive protests, and even yesterday, as you say, it was all over the map, whether he was going to stay, whether he was going to go, what was the tipping point? Listen, it was unsustainable. I mean, the fact that it took him this long uh, to, to basically uh, respect the democrat democratic process right people taking to the streets in those numbers was definitely democracy in action and he was being anti-democratic uh, in not responding to the will of the people so it took almost two weeks as i indicated uh, and people just had had enough and i think the chats uh this is not just about rosejo i think this is also a pushback in general to to generations right of administration and government uh, that has not been responsive to the needs and prioritizing the needs of Puerto Rico and the people. Uh, and so this, the culmination of that chat just really put and laid bare everything that people knew, right? Not only in terms of the sexist, homophobic language, uh, but also the corruption and utilizing of public resources to go after opponents and to go after the press. Uh, it was just enough and it is enough. And now, obviously, the investigations that are going to ensue uh, regarding the content of the chat, the investigations that are ensuing uh, with regards to uh, other aspects of the administration and the way it was operating. Uh, so for us, me, myself, those of us in the diaspora, our work uh, before Congress obviously has become more challenging, but we're committed. Yeah. The people of Puerto Rico should not be uh, bearing the consequences of this corrupt administration. The monies that have been designated uh, to Puerto Rico need to flow. The, that needs to come directly to the people. And yeah. the issue of the Fiscal Control Board, uh, which is very oppressive, an unelected board uh, that probably will try to to step in and assume more power, definitely another rebuke, right? The people have been saying that they want the fiscal control board to be gone. That's mm -hmm. a conversation before Congress right now, uh, and that's part of the work that we're engaged in. Well, that's my question. Is that does the problem end with Rosselló gone, or is the corruption systemic? Now, this is, a, look, this is the beginning, right? And it's about a new chapter for Puerto Rico. Uh, and it's about people saying, you know what, we have to reform and change the way government has worked or how the way government functions. And there has been conversations about, you know, reforms, uh, laws that have to be implemented uh, that will make changes happen. And so, yes, I mean, none of us condone corruption, right? That is stealing and that is an affront to the people. Uh, so none of us are condoning that. We have to make sure, though, that the people on the ground, 
ground are not the ones that are suffering because of the ir irresponsible and immoral actions of those that were placed there to lead. And so that is part of work is that accountability and transparency and that those legislators in the Senate and in the Assembly, they need to heed the warning because now the line has been drawn in the sand. The people are saying we are not going to go back to politics as usual and that what have we have been able to do with Rosselló will be able to do with all of you. So I think this is a real warning about how we have to turn the page and start a new chapter. And I'm very hopeful. I'm very excited because people are definitely saying that the, par the party, this, the messaging, the people that came together, regardless of party affiliation, regardless of other agendas, right? It was very focused on one message and one action, and that was to get rid of, uh, of Rosselló, and that has happened. So I think this is a real rallying cry. Well, listen, Mark Viverito, thank you very much for giving us your feelings on thank this you. morning. You called for a new day in Puerto Rico.